steaming this neck off is not going to happen and here's why because I believe this has been set with epoxy I had the heat on this section here for what felt like an hour because it just felt like it needed a lot of heat to loosen up and it just never I'm like this is all the further I can get I can get under a corner and that's it and it's just way more work than I think is going to be um, called for so I'm going to have to go a different route and that is taking my 18 thousandths flexible little Japanese saw here and I'm going to cut right up here and then have to fix that on its own in a different way I suppose so I'm cutting it off don't try this at home kids so I've got the neck heel let's see if you can see that released from the body but what I was afraid of was the press rod might get in the way because there's no access under here for the truss rod, truss rod, if that's the headstock end of it, I was hoping that the truss rod would end somewhere maybe back in here or in here, and it didn't. It goes all the way through in here somehow. So what I've done is I've cut as far as I can, um, and not ruining my saw, trying to cut through the, um, the truss rod itself, but I cut as far into here on each side as I could to get all the wood cut and so the only thing that's left in there is just where the truss rod is. But then I've also cut down here at this fret and I'm going to try to gently, you can kind of hear where it's creaking a little bit, I'm going to try to release that, you can see how it's pivoting right at the uh, 14th fret there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this neck off it'll then become a bolt-on neck. The neck came off pretty good. Uh, the cut went really well and uh, you can see there was a dovetail in there um, but also I know you can't see this but when you look up underneath here and I can see all this clear thick you know layer of, of epoxy that's on that fingerboard um, and I just look at this stuff in here too and to me that just doesn't look like wood glue so unfortunately I didn't want to have to do it this way but I think I have to and too late going back now okay so here is what it looks like with the tongue taken off and I don't know if you can see some of those clear spots of glue in there shining a little bit that's epoxy so I think the next move I'm going to make, <clears throat> excuse me, is to get rid of this. This is the dovetail that is left glued in there, and uh, it is definitely epoxied in there. So I don't think that uh, doing any kind of a steam kind of a process would have helped this. So I think sawing the neck off like it is was probably the only thing that could be done. Um, but I'm going to take this out of here. I'm going to chisel this out of here because this hole that's in here this like canal or a shaft or I don't know what you call it but I guess that's where the truss rod nut kind of sat in but that goes all the way down so really the only th thing you have is here and here there's not a whole lot of wood in the center here so bolting that in there to me just doesn't seem very secure so I'm gonna get rid of this whole dovetail here and then I'm gonna make a block to fit in there and uh, extend the neck block I guess to flush with the surface. Here's the fingerboard extension glued to the neck. You can also see where the inserts now reside in the heel of the neck. The fingerboard and the neck obviously are face down on a really nice stable hard flat a piece of white oak. You notice here I've got tape on each side and three layers of uh, masking tape on each side kept that fingerboard from rocking because of the 14 inch radius. It actually came out pretty perfect so it was easy to clamp. Um, 
what was left of the dovetail is what is uh, affixed to the fingerboard extension. I did have to clean up this one just a little bit. You could probably see there's a little maple shim underneath it there, about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, the fingerboard where I cut through is in here um, where the fret slot is. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I have a little piece of Teflon in there actually. It's those Teflon sheets that Stu Max sells. Um, and I cut a little one and put in between there. They're about 22 thousandths, I think is what it is. And so it fit in there really nice, um, you know, for fret slot purposes. And uh, I'm going to pull this off now and take that apart. And I should have my fret slot back again. So here's the fingerboard extension glued on again. I've got a straight edge on there to show you um, how this turned out. You can see the tape on each side again that was three layers of tape on a 14 inch radius fingerboard and that worked out perfectly flat square and uh, didn't have any rock uh, when clamping. You can also see that little Teflon strip that's in there. Get a little better shot of that. Now keep in mind that fret slot did go all the way through and you can kind of see that a little there. Um, the Teflon helped retain my fret slot and so a little bit of touch up to help along with that but what I want to show you here hope I can get a decent shot of this but the fingerboard come out really well quite honestly perfect just all along there it's dead flat across the entire length so the Teflon is now pulled. Can you tell which fret slot it was? Well, now you can. Worked pretty darn good. Come on, great actually. So I just have to be careful with that tongue when working with it. There's plenty of glue surface there to keep it on, but you know, be very careful you don't have an accident and break that off. I've done that before. I'm gonna glue this up. This is my little shim that's gonna go right about here. It's very delicate. I can't wait to glue this up because I'm scared to hold it. It is so delicate. Um, it goes from literally about one thousandth, maybe two, to about uh, the necessary uh, 38 that I need. Actually, I think it's more like 39, but with one thousandth difference, I'll live with it. I think it'll be fine. Um, so I'm going to glue this up now. All right, so we're glued up, clamped up. For something like this, very important that you make sure that you have a clamping call that is a little bit bigger than the entire surface that you are gluing because you want to make sure that um, the edges are down and down really well, and they are. So moving right along. All glued up. Hopefully you can see this. It's real thin here. And then you get a taper to a little bit thicker over there. I used walnut. This is actually a scrap of Clara walnut that I had laying around. It was brown. It was the right size. It'll work. So the only thing left to do is bolt this neck on and see how it fits. So it's clamped up and I'm showing you just how nice and tight the uh, fit of the tongue is. You can see that. You can see just a little bit of the discoloring of, of the new wood compared to the old wood. Slight different shade of the brown, but it's really not that bad. It's an old guitar. It's brown. It's fine. Um, but as we go here, whoops, watch my light. You can actually see as we get up in here how much thicker. Let me get that light out of the way. How much thicker it is. So the tapered wedge come out great and uh, everything's sitting nice up against the body. It's all glued up and uh, before I glued it up I did check the set of the neck and it's still dead straight. It's perfect. I couldn't be happier with the way this is going right now. 
So here we are, clamps are off, straight edge is on. Let's get a look and see how well we did. Hopefully you can see what I see, and that is no space under the straight edge. At any point, it stayed perfectly dead flat. There's the tongue, and how nicely that came out. I'll put a little light on there so you can see. If I can find. Not doing real well with the light here, excuse me. And here, got a little bit of a gap. Let's see if I can find that. Just a little one. Not bad though. A couple of thousands. So um, I would normally want that to be about flush with the top of the bridge, but uh, I'm happy with the way this is. This has come out very well, and uh, should be a much better neck angle. And this will be very much playable again. Moving right along, the fret job come out real nice, and uh, you know, that all looks pretty good. Looks very good, actually. Um, now I'm doing the nut and the saddle. There it is. Not too bad for having been sawn off. Let's see what the other side looks like. So, I did a little finish touch up here whenever the sawing occurred. There was just a little bit of chip in here and there, so I did some burn in um, on that. And after doing that, I had to do a little bit of wet sanding here and there. Um, and I did buff it up. I only buffed it with uh, my medium compound on my buffing wheel. Um, just to kind of still give it the old patina that it has from being an old guitar. Now here, I wanted to give a little more kind of instruction on how I did the uh, saddle here, but unfortunately my phone had a problem and so I was not able to do that. So you just get the finished product. But, come out real nice. And there's a lot of angle down there now so we got good pressure and the neck reset definitely helped uh, take care of that fret job and voila a nice new nut and this guitar is done Possibly one of the best sounding Yamaha guitars confiscated by the police I've ever heard.